Chapter 14. A Terrifying Possibility Ari, what are you doing? Nicole had awakened out of a sound sleep to find Ari sitting up in bed beside her in a yoga position, arms extended, palms up. From lips that only slightly moved came airy, incomprehensible sounds. She turned on the bed lamp and watched him in horror. Though his eyes were wide open, Ari seemed oblivious to his surroundings. Ari, wake up! Nicole grabbed his arm and began to shake him. No, no, I won't do it! He flailed out wildly and almost knocked Nicole from the bed. The desperation in his voice impelled her to action. She grabbed him around the neck and hung on, yelling her loudest now. Stop it! Wake up! Ari! What's going on? He suddenly went limp and she loosened her grip. Ari turned and looked at her blankly. Where did you come from? Where did I come from? Don't you know where you are? Darling, you've been having a nightmare. The man beside her seemed not to recognize her. He stared at her for another moment. Then his eyes glazed over again and he began muttering in German. Third level. Chosen. Special mission. No, no. He shuddered violently as though some unseen hand had shaken him, then fell back on his pillow unconscious. The clock on the bedstand stood at 3.21 a.m. Nicole turned off the lamp and pulled the covers up over her and Ari. What in the world was happening to him? Sleep was out of the question. She lay awake, trying to understand what she had just witnessed. This was the third time she had awakened to such a scene. How many other occurrences like this had there been, unknown to her while she had been sound asleep? What did it all mean? She had only casually mentioned similar episodes in the past. Ari had denied remembering anything and had brushed the incidents off as meaningless. Was he covering something up? Something else from his past, perhaps? She lay awake until dawn, determined that this time she would insist on getting to the bottom of it all. You had another weird episode last night. Nicole faced Ari in the kitchen. He had just come in from his morning run. Got to get into the shower, he responded, wiping the sweat from his face with the front of his T-shirt and turning toward the bedroom. You didn't answer me, remonstrated Nicole, stepping quickly in front of him. I heard you, but I'm in a hurry. Got an early class today, you know. Look, you're not putting me off this time, said Nicole firmly. Six weeks ago, I told you what some of the other doctors at the hospital said. There's something in your past that's trying to come out. And I told you I'm not going to a psychiatrist for regression therapy. I didn't recommend that, she cut in quickly. Well, that's what one of the doctors said I needed. I tried it once, years ago. And as soon as the psychiatrist started to put me into this, this relaxed state, I could see his face. Look, don't trigger something, okay? His face? The man from East Berlin who haunts your nightmares, she persisted? Right. That did it for me. I'm not letting anybody hypnotize me. Ever. I think somebody has been hypnotizing you. For a long time, said Nicole solemnly, and you just don't know it, or won't admit it to yourself. With a resigned sigh, Ari relaxed and leaned against the door jamb. Okay, what happened last night? It was like every other time when I've seen it. I don't know how often it's happened that I don't know about. You were sitting up in bed in a yoga position, hands extended, palms up, muttering in some strange language, repeating the same words over and over, like a mantra, maybe. Ari wiped his brow again and shook his head. Honestly, Nikki, I don't remember anything. I used to recall it all, clearly, remember seeing him. But that hasn't been happening lately. It's different. I see him like a flash of insight when I'm awake. Then it all goes away. Not often. Once a month, maybe. I shook you half awake this time, and you muttered some words in German. I did? Yes, that figures. Anyone trying to take over your mind would communicate in your native tongue. What did I say? I just heard a few words. But if you think about them, it may bring back a memory. Can we try? I'm willing to try anything except hypnosis. I know that opens me up to him. I wouldn't touch it either. Totally dangerous. We'll talk about that some other time. Now, let's see if these words arouse a memory, if I can put it together in German. You said something like third level, chosen, special mission. No, no. Does that mean anything? Ari closed his eyes and tried to concentrate. 
third level, maybe, in the car in East Berlin, after they arrested me, he said something about 10 levels of consciousness. I thought it was a put-on. That was 25 years ago. What about since then? It seems to ring a bell, but I don't know why. Concentrate. Think about it. I'm trying. I told you, when I see his face, just for a split second, I get the feeling that I'm being pulled higher, almost like I'm going out of my body. That's when I fight it, and the feeling goes away. You said something about initiation before. Yeah, I get that feeling too sometimes. That ties in with chosen and special mission. Think about those words in German. It triggers something, but I can't get it, he said after a short silence. It's like a name on the tip of your tongue. You know it, but can't say it. There's something there, but I can't quite reach it. It's maddening. So I just don't think about it. Try, Ari. Try. We've got to find out what's going on. Does it have anything to do with Roger's group or your student movement, bringing down the wall, the collapse of communism? He stared at the floor in bewilderment. It's odd. Sometimes I get the feeling it surfaces from deep somewhere, then it's gone, that this whole thing that I've been pursuing with a passion for 25 years isn't as much my idea as somebody else's. There's something beyond it, some other purpose. That fits, exclaimed Nicole. You've been chosen for a special mission. But by whom? And what is it? Ari reached for her hand. His eyes were pleading with her. You don't think I'm losing my mind? This sounds crazy. Maybe it's overwork, not enough sleep. An obsession that's driven me so long that I'm... You're perfectly sane, interrupted Nicole firmly. Don't give that another thought. Brilliant people have weird experiences. Carl Jung had visitations from the spirit world. He even had his own spirit guide, Philemon, he called him. Said he was his guru, real as a person. He walked up and down in the garden with him, carried on conversations. I'm not that bad off, yet, laughed Ari. That's a relief. In some ways, your case is similar, said Nicole thoughtfully. But what's happening to you is more subtle. Maybe I've got some wires crossed. You admit there's a lot we don't know about the brain. Nicole reached up and brushed the tousled, damp hair back from his forehead. Love, nobody's messing with your brain. It's your mind they're after. Brain, mind, word games. Ari, I've tried to explain this to you before, persisted Nicole. The brain is physical. The mind is not. It takes something physical, like drugs or electric shock, to affect your brain. Nobody's doing that to you. Oh, yeah? What about some kind of low-frequency radio waves or magnetic current beamed into this apartment, like the KGB aims at foreign embassies in Moscow? Forget it. It would affect me, too, and I'm not having nightmares or seeing him. Then what's happening? Somebody's doing something to me. That's what we're trying to figure out. It's not your brain they're working on, but your mind. No one's slipping drugs into your food or aiming microwaves at you. And even if they were, that wouldn't program you to do specific things. Specific things? Right, the thoughts you get, the words you mumbled in German, initiation, higher consciousness, chosen, special mission, those all indicate some specific goal. It takes a mind to program that into you. So you think somebody's trying to do some kind of mind control thing on me? Telepathically? That's a possibility. We know that one mind can communicate with another over any distance. That's been demonstrated halfway around the world. Some American astronauts sent telepathic messages back to Earth while they were orbiting the moon, with pretty good success. But mind control from a distance? Has that been done? No question. Plenty of experimental data. The KGB's been involved in it for years, and the CIA. And right here in France, the same thing is going on. In hypnosis, one person controls another by audible commands. That's why I'd stay away from hypnosis. But there's no reason that couldn't happen telepathically. Ari gestured helplessly. I think that's a little far out. Something is going on with my brain. It has to be. Look, Ari, Nicole was exasperated. Your brain is a physical conglomeration of matter inside your skull. It can be affected physically by trauma, drugs, electromagnetic current, 
but that wouldn't make you think certain thoughts or do certain things. No physical influence, not even an electrode probing parts of your brain with your skull opened up on an operating table, conveys specific ideas. For that to happen, some mind would have to be involved. She waited for that to sink in. I'm not trying to be difficult, responded Ari defensively, but you're the brain surgeon and you keep avoiding the obvious, that there's some malfunction in my brain. Electrical current, chemical reactions, isn't that how the brain thinks? Couldn't there be some imbalance? The brain doesn't think, Ari. Wait a minute. The brain is like a computer. It only does what it's told. Nikki, this is really off the wall. Then tell me, how does a brain cell decide what it's going to think about? Some kind of stimulus, I guess. That starts the electric current going. You can't believe that. A stimulus can trigger simple reactions, but not complex ideas. You think some stimulus started an electric current that told me to say this sentence? And if it did, where did the electric current in my brain get these ideas? Dreamed them up on its own? Come on, Ari. But doesn't everybody believe that, that the brain thinks? Just because everybody believes something doesn't make it true. I'm the neurosurgeon, and I'm telling you the brain doesn't think. The mind thinks and uses the brain, like a computer, to control the body. Ari smiled in spite of himself. My undergraduate degree is in physics, you know. I was taught that matter was all there was, that everything could be explained in physical terms. Electric current, protein molecules, chemical reactions. Another common fallacy, interrupted Nicole. You can't explain moral concepts, the idea of justice and truth, as chemical reactions in the brain. Ari was shaking his head. What you're telling me is intriguing, that minds aren't physical. So there must be a non-physical dimension of the universe, whatever that means. There has to be. And you're right, we don't know what that means. That's exactly what he told me 25 years ago in East Berlin, and I thought he was crazy. He said that? Exactly. Said I was a prisoner of the physical dimension, and that I didn't understand, but that I would someday. I don't know that we're exactly prisoners, but there's something beyond the physical, that's for sure. That's revolutionary. To a physicist, maybe, but not to a neurosurgeon. That brings me back to the book by the CIA agent, mused Ari. He says the CIA is in touch with non-human minds that don't even have bodies. Same thing Robert Jastrow and some other top astronomers suggest, but I never took them seriously. You forced me to now, and I don't like the idea. It makes me uncomfortable too, confessed Nicole, but I know that minds exist and that they're not physical, and I can prove it. Go ahead. Okay, you're dedicated to fighting for equality and justice. Those are abstract ethical concepts without physical properties. So they couldn't arise from physical activity in the brain, could they? Ari thought for a moment, then shook his head. A non-physical concept like truth, I don't see how it could arise from physical stimulus of a brain cell. It just couldn't. Right, we can say that dogmatically. Keep talking. Surely you wouldn't accept the idea that your determination to rid the world of Marxism and the horrible injustice and depression it brings exists merely because some random electrical current in your brain makes you think like that. I'm not arguing that anymore. So, like it or not, there's a spiritual dimension to human experience. You can't explain an appreciation of art, say, or philosophical concepts like truth or good and evil in terms of electrical current and chemical reactions in your brain. You already made that point, I'm convinced. But telepathic mind control, mused Ari skeptically. How would that work? Influence, not control. Total control would turn you into a zombie, and that would be obvious. Someone's trying to break your will. Implant specific thoughts in order to get you to do certain things. Use you for some mission. You really think so? Nicole nodded soberly. I don't think there's any other explanation that fits the facts. I certainly wouldn't operate as a surgeon on your brain based on what I saw last night and what you've told me. They stood there in silence, looking at each other sympathetically, holding hands. There's something else bothering you, said Ari at last. 
We can't say the humans are the only intelligent beings in the universe, Nicole admitted somberly. There must be other minds out there. And Jastro could be right. Some of them may not have bodies, like what religious people call spirits. Nicole paused for a moment, thinking it through, then went on. And suppose one of those minds from a non-physical dimension, a dimension that could be right next door to this physical universe, suppose that entity, or whatever you call it, is trying to implant ideas in your mind so it can use you for some purpose. Exactly what that book said, and Roger poo-pooed it. The CIA's got to be involved. Roger's lying to me. He knows what's going on. Never mind the CIA, said Nicole earnestly. There's a much worse possibility than that. Another dimension, and it's frightening. Ari's eyes flashed with anger. So, they've got a mission for me, have they? Well, I've got a mission of my own. Look, I'm drowning in sweat, and I've got a class. He gave Nicole's hand a quick squeeze and headed for the shower.